Welcome to my channel, Outside the Levees. I'm Jared Serenay, and today I'm hanging out in my hometown, St. Bernard Parish, with my friend Rachel and her father, Paul. We went fishing in the bayou town of Delacroix, Louisiana. Then we took our fish to Rachel's restaurant to cook them up. Now let's get it started. My hometown of St. Bernard Parish was formed in 1807, and it's part of metropolitan New Orleans. It was named after the patron saint of Bernardo de Galvez, who served as colonial governor of Louisiana while it was under Spanish rule. St. Bernard has a rich bayou culture that was pioneered by emigrants from the Canary Islands. These Canary Islanders settled in the coastal regions of St. Bernard and called themselves Isleños. Today, we are visiting the bayou town of Delacro, Louisiana. It was one of the main settlements for the Isleños. The rich bayou culture and fertile waters of Delacro are still alive today, and that's exactly why we started our trip here. Serenade's boat launch. And how long y'all been open for? <laughs> Too many years. <laughs> <laughs> Over 50 years. Well, let me ask you this, how many hurricanes you come back from? Oh, shoot, I can't count them. <laughs> <laughs> They're not fun. Yeah. They're okay. getting worse. <laughs> well, I'm gonna need one boat launch and two pounds of shrimp. All right. All right she said the shrimp ain't pretty today. I don't know. No, they're, they're all right. They're small. We they're had, small, we but had, they still uh, catch. We had large shrimp last week, but the season's changing, so we got what they have. <laughs> yeah. That'll catch. You leave it on the counter. Yeah. All right. All right, y'all, so when you come down to Delacro, stop at Serenades for your launch and your shrimp. I wish we had those big ones now. All right, so she was honest with me. She told me they're small, but we're just catching fish with them, so that doesn't matter, but maybe I'll eat them. I ain't scared to eat small shrimp. That goes perfect in a little jambalaya. So tell me who, who who's that gentleman right there? That's Lionel Serenade. And who was that? That was the original owner of this place. He was my husband. And how yeah. long were y'all married for? Sixty-one years. Wow. And y'all did this together all them years? Oh yeah. Did it's you the... know you were marrying into a a, a, a marina boat launch? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> but now I'm here. So, Mr. Lionel was one of the last Spanish speakers here on Delacro. Uh, we only have a few Spanish speakers left, but I remember coming in with my uncle sometimes and they would speak Spanish together. Just some of our cool history that we have down here in Delacro. Tell us where we are today, Paul. Well, we're at Delacro Island by uh, Seven Days Boat Launch. And we're heading up the Bayou towards uh, Club Bayou. We hope we'll go catch some fish today. I've been coming down here since I was a little bitty kid. My daddy, uh, my daddy used to have a crab route. He bought a, uh, a truck. We used to come down here and buy seafood, buy crabs from uh, Mr. Joe Serenade and, and from Dummy. We, we trapped, we had trapping land. And uh, when they wasn't trapping, my daddy would buy furs for, for Simon Yoko with uh, Delta Raw Fur in New Orleans. I see him come down here with rolls of money that big around, go back, have had a right out IOUs, have a truckload of forest, a, a three ton state body truck, I mean loaded. And there was money made down here like you wouldn't believe. I went okay. to Vietnam, I went to Australia. <laughs> <laughs> well, I always came back home. Yeah. <laughs> this is home. Yeah, I couldn't wait to get here. So we left from Serenade's Marina here on Bayou Terrebuff and used this canal to access Lake Leary with a plan to catch redfish in the lake. After hitting spots here and here with no bites, we ended up fishing for a while here. Lake Leary is usually a good lake for redfish, but on this particular day, we weren't having any luck. Mm -hmm. We got something, y'all. <laughs> we have no idea what we got. Bass. Oh. Bass. Oh, yeah. Bass. All right, hey, those fry up good. Get him in the boat. Ooh, that's a nice bass, too, right? Oh! Yay! Yay. Yay. All right, we won't go hungry, All right. huh? <laughs> so after not getting any more bites, we crossed the lake and came to the corner of Bayou Leary and Bayou Terrebuff here. Oh! Got a net. How about the net? No net. <laughs> hey -o. 
pull up. Oh, that's a pretty one. That's a nice one. <laughs> we can cook you, boo. The boo cat. <laughs> We rode around Lake Leary, the lake I was explaining to y'all, and really, um, there was no tide movement. And when you're fishing down here in Delacroix, the fish seem to feed on a tide, whether it be an incoming or an outgoing tide, that kind of gets, triggers fish and makes them want to feed. And it's possible that we could go back when the tide actually starts and catch them in that lake. But for now, we've decided to come to what we call Bayou Leary. And we're parked here on the bank in the shade. Rachel just caught a catfish. What's interesting about fishing here at Delacroix is that it's the kind of place where one cast you can catch a catfish, next cast you can catch a bass, after that you catch a redfish, you catch a saltwater drum, we really don't know what could be next. So we're going to park here, fish with some of these beautiful shrimp from Serenade's Marina. Let's see if we can get some more to cook. Alright y'all, let's see what we got. I'm going probably catfish. That's what I'm saying. Oh yeah, nice little catfish. Nice catfish y'all. Get him in the boat. All right, we're gonna have something to fry at Miss Rachel's restaurant, y'all. We're gonna have something to fry. That one is a little keeper. Actually, that's the size I like. That's the perfect right. yeah. catfish for frying right there. Anything bigger than that, you might have to put it in the gravy. So <laughs> let's get him in the box. All right, oh, that's a good size right there. Is that a good size or what? We frying fish, that's the one right there. <laughs> Alright y'all, and that's Delacroix right there. So I mean, this is accessible for anybody. I mean, you could come do this in a kayak, a P-Rog, a paddle board. A little John boat with a trolling motor. If you're a good swimmer, you can swim across the bayou. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, this time of year, good time to swim across the bayou. Come hang out by the tree and catch no, you some I'm fish. I'm playing, you don't want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> You never know their Come on now. Good enough. Oh, they He'll keep. He'll keep. <laughs> Alright, well we're sitting here in Bayou Leary. That's Bayou Leary right behind us. We're up on the bank here. You can see we're just kind of under a nice little live oak tree. There's not many of these live oak trees left here on the bayou. Saltwater kind of got them over the years, but we found us a nice one. There's another one right there. And we are catching catfish right out here. There's a deep hole here. How, how deep do you think it is, Mr. Paul? About 35, 40 foot. 35, 40 foot hole. We're kind of on this end of it here, almost under the boat, just catching catfish with shrimp. Real simple. Got their shrimp back at the marina. Got a little bit of weight. I'm using a jig head. Rachel's using a jig head. Mr. Paul's got his Carolina rig, it looks like. Just catching catfish. Maybe when the tide starts moving, we'll get some redfish or some drum in here. And we might go look around the marsh again a little bit, but we were kind of wasting our time. You know, it's very, very tide dependent. Unless you get on them real early, which we didn't, you're kind of dependent on the tidal movement to, to make your fish. So when you schedule your trip to come to St. Bernard, try to look at a tide chart and figure out, okay, I know the tide's going to be moving about that time of day. And just you know plan on being here when the tide's moving if you can that's that's a good little tip preferably a fallen tide yeah that's typically about a foot, better foot, and a, foot and a quarter foot and a half drop that's good fishing yeah so when the tide um he calls a falling tide an outgoing tide when that tide falls or out you know leaves the marsh that's when fish have to leave the marsh with it so your predator fish kind of school up and find little opportunities there so Try to look at a tide guide. It's not always 100% correct, but you do want to come fishing down here when there's some tide. And when there's not, you come park here in the shade, catch some catfish like we're doing right now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so one thing about these bayou towns, many of them, like Delacroix, were separated from what we would call the big city, as in New Orleans. So they kind of had their own world down here. And with that, Rachel's got a fish on. A baby. And with that comes their own folklore. So Mr. Paul is going to tell us a story about some witches that were apparently hanging out down here somewhere near Delacro. And we're going to hear some Bayou folklore. And this was years ago, maybe back in the 20s or 30s, I don't know which. But anyway, it was a long time ago. And uh, I guess when he was a, a young boy. And he said, uh, he told me, he said, uh, 
they'd whip you. If they caught you on the road, they'd beat on you. The witches would beat on you. So the man got got a scare, and he went and got an old rotten boat on the side of the buyer. He said the witches come coming down the road, they, they got in the boat with him. He got under the bow of the boat where they couldn't see him. And uh, he said a few seconds later, the boat was flying. And uh, he said he stayed under the bow of the boat. It was a rotten boat too, he said. And he said the boat was flying. And he said it came, to, it came to a beach and they parked it on a beach and they left. They got out of the boat and they left. He got out the boat, the guy got out the boat, he didn't know where he was. It didn't look familiar at all. And uh, the, even the vegetation was different. So he, he went by a tree and he broke a branch off a tree. He, never, he said he never had seen that tree before. And uh, he, he said he got back and put it under the bow of the boat. And he said, here they come back. So he, he hit again. And he said the boat flew back. He said it landed right back where it was parked at before. He said and they, they finally got out the boat and they left. And he said, well, he crawled out the boat and he kept the branch with him. And he was asking everybody around Waklaski and that if they ever saw that, that type of tree branch before. And they said, no, we have never seen a uh, tree with that kind of leaves and, uh, and that on it, you know. He said he come to Delacroix Island with the branch. He had the branch in a wagon or the buggy or whatever he comes. This was a long time ago. And uh, he said, uh, a man down here asked me, he said, where you got that branch at? He said, um, I don't know where I was. He said, I broke it off a tree branch wherever I was. And the man told him, the only place that they got trees like that's in Cuba. So they took a trip to Cuba, probably to a seance or something they had down there. And uh, I started thinking, you know, I said, yeah, old boat flying in the air and all that. But every, every one of them pictures you hear about witches, they was all flying around on a broomstick. So I guess if they can make a broom fly, they can make a boat fly. The yeah. island witches took a boat, not a broom. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know about witches anymore, but that's, that was a story that was told to me, you know? But when he had left to go to the camp, the good rat was only worth a dollar, you see? Ooh. Rachel got a little size to hers. Get him, my baby. Don't give him no slack. Oh, we're getting him every cast now. And that, that looks, I don't know. That's a, that's a, uh, throw him in the box. see the spots on him? Give him to me, man. Give him to daddy. Me. Don't let it swing over here, man. I'm talking about give it to you. <laughs> well, she's tough. I raised her. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good little channel for Yeah. I just explained Oh, we to got you. two. We doubled up. Yeah, man, we, we doubled, doubled up. Look at that. Look at that. We got All twins, the, Paul. Two How about that? We are definitely going to have something to eat today. Yeah, yeah. we're good now. The Lord fat. <laughs> And if anyone does not know how to hold a catfish, hold it with the fin back here so it can't get you. And it's the per. Over the top of and over that fin, it, it, it can't get you. Control, <laughs> you don't control you. All right, so we're gonna clean the fish here at Serenades in Delacro, and then we're gonna take the fillets to the Fish Shack, which is Rachel's restaurant over there in St. Bernard. Now, she'll do that. If you come here, you catch fish, you clean them here, and you bring the fillet clean fish to her restaurant, she will actually fry them for you. So we're gonna get these fish cleaned up and head over to Rachel's. All right, y'all, well, we uh, couldn't find any redfish, which is a brackish saltwater species that we get a lot of here in Delacro. 
And if you want to make sure that you have the best chance of possible of catching redfish or trout or flounder, you can hire a charter captain. That's something we have a lot of here in St. Bernard Parish is charter captains who take people fishing. And these guys are out there every day. You know, I haven't been down here in over a month, so I didn't really know exactly where to go to catch fish. And if you visit this link here, I'll have it in the description below, St. Bernard Parish, our tourism department has all that laid out for you. I mean, they've got different charter captains, different lodging, fishing camps. They've even got so far as like listing out our seafood restaurants. So go check that website out. It's really comprehensive, probably the best place to go if you really are thinking about taking a trip down here to St. Bernard. We're gonna go to Rachel's restaurant and cook up these fish. Like I mentioned, if you catch fish down here, bring them to Rachel. We got other restaurants who'll do that too. They'll cook up the fish that you caught that day. Don't get no better than that. I think we might even stop to get some shrimp. All right, so y'all seen us get the shrimp at the marina, which if we didn't catch fish, honestly, we were gonna eat those. But now I'm still craving shrimp, so we had to stop at one of our favorite places to get seafood down here, Casanova's. Old shrimp. Look, they even got the fixings. I mean, come on, come on. <laughs> Mushrooms to put in your boil, garlic, potatoes. They got boiled crabs in here ready to go. And they're stuffed artichokes. They're to uh, die for. Hold on, hold on. What is a stuffed artichoke? So you usually take crab stuffing and boil your artichokes and then stuff it with the stuffing. And it is a perfect little snack. These came from Mr. Ricky Robin. And Wait, we so so you're getting these from someone who fishes locally? Ricky Robin. Really? Yep. Straight off the boat. Straight off the boat. Wow. Get our crabs from our local fishermen too. How about that? And the good thing is, if you do like we did, go catch you a few fish, bring them to Rachel to cook. This is right, like right across the road from Rachel's place. So you could do all of it, all in the same swoop. Go fishing, bring your fish to Rachel's, eat at Rachel's, and then stop here and bring your seafood home. It's the way to do it. All right, y'all, we finally here. Where are we at? We at the fish shack down the road, baby. At the fish shack down the road. Let me tell y'all something about the fish shack. My kids, Jack and Milo, love the fish shack. I'm gonna tell you why. I don't know how she does it, but she makes the crispiest fried fish I've ever had. All right, so we got the fish that we caught on the boat and let's go fry it up. We have our house blend at the fish shack and we use a beer and mustard um, batter. It's a few beers and some mustard, kind of a nice watery texture. It's always, you know, not too thick, not too runny. Goes perfect. So we'll take a few pieces of fish, swish it up in there with the other fillets we have. Squeeze it, get a lot of the excess off. Okay, so you don't want to just dip it and then straight to your thigh. No, you want to get a little bit of it off. It's just a good coating is all you're really doing. And then fluff it in our fish shack house blend. And you can't tell me what's all in there. I cannot tell you what's all in there, but I can tell you that we're working on being able to sell it to our customers. So that is super exciting coming soon. Now these are big fillies. We usually cut them, but let's we caught them so we can yeah, right. fry them however we want to, right? <laughs> Little shakes so they don't stick together. But everybody's always nervous of when to take them out. And we have learned a little trick over the many years of frying fish. If you can take a little knife like this and press on it and it presses through, like that, it's not ready. Oh, so it should have enough resistance. It should have enough resistance to not let you push all the way through to the white meat, correct? Very good. <laughs> <That's> me. <laughs> just, just, right. We have our local shrimp. Same thing, huh? Same thing. Try to use as much as we can. Local, local, local. Right. Then a really good toss. Come on, y'all. 
Doesn't get better than that, St. Bernard Parish. This is what it's all about. All right, so we got, let's try the catfish first. This is one of the smaller catfish. Now Rachel's got her own secret sauce too. She calls it the crazy sauce. All right, so this is the catfish, one of the smaller ones with the cra crazy sauce. Crazy sauce, yes. I mean, that fish was swimming just hours ago. Bring it to Rachel, she cooked it up in the crazy. Come on, y'all. Crispy, that is. This is pretty awesome. Yeah, this is really good. I mean, gotta have the hush puppy. It's perfect. It's perfect. I love eating here, y'all. I really do. So this is catfish we caught this morning. Shrimp from right across the road. Yes. All local St. Bernard stuff. Yes. Come see Rachel. Come see me. Come on down and see us. We're here. <laughs> Well, I hope that gives you a little taste of the fishing, the history, and the culture of St. Bernard Parish. We'd love to have you. Go to visitstbernard.com to plan your trip. Thanks for watching.